This is Field Target Tech, episode number two, and my name is Tom Holland. Today we're going to be uh, weighing some pellets. Um, first episode, we went over washing and lubing pellets. So if you guys haven't seen that video yet, or if you'd like to watch that one, watch that one first before this one. Um, we're going to go right to the workbench, and before we even get started, the most important thing you have to do when weighing your pellets is one or two simple things. Make sure you have a steady work table, workbench, um, that doesn't move. Um, you don't want something that's shaky or rickety uh, because these scales are very, very sensitive. Um, also, you don't want a ceiling fan or an open window or a heat or an air conditioner register um, really blowing near these, uh, these scales because they are sensitive and they will fluctuate um, due to uh, due to wind and breezes and stuff like that. Even an open window on the other side of the room could affect uh, the accuracy of these scales. So we're going to go right to the workbench right now and get the weighing pellet. Okay guys, before we get started, we are going to go over what uh, how I have these sorted out. Um, these, as you can see, um, I don't know how much of the camera can see it, but we're separated by 8.50, 8.52, 8.54, etc and if you notice this row is gone which i usually use everything from 8.40 to 8.48 in an, an average match if i'm in a match that really doesn't mean anything it's not a grand prix it's just a local match i'll use this whole line and use those to uh, continue on with my sorting process um, measuring head size rolling them and stuff like that once the weighing process is finished if I'm in a bigger match, um, a big Grand Prix match or the Nationals or something, I'll pick one particular weight. In this case, it would be um, 8.44, which is this middle tray. And I will sort them until this tray is pretty much filled. And then I'll continue onward with my head sorting process and my rolling process after that. That ensures that I'll have just one weight in particular um, and it's my groups will be definitely more accurate than that so we're just going to put this up here out of the picture for a second and there's a couple different scales you can use um, I would recommend a scale that goes as fine as you can afford they're not expensive scales this is probably at the time it was probably about a $200 scale and I need to re-zero this um, but this only these are my pellets that I washed the other day. And you want to take that and just put it on to the tray. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but that says 8.3 grains. This does not have a higher definition as compared to this. Now, if that's 8.3 grains, you don't know if that's 8.30 or 8.39. So you want to weigh another pellet. 8.5 again 8.6 that could be 8.6 uh, 8.60 or it could be 8.68 or 8.69 so it, it's not an exact um, fine enough scale for what we're trying to do in my opinion if this is all you guys have it's it's better than than nothing I would use and keep just one particular weight I wouldn't keep 8.4s and 8.3s and 8.5s. I would just stick with one particular weight that you pick and stay with that. But we're not going to spend too much time with this scale because in my opinion, uh, it's not it's not perfect enough for what, what my likings are. If that's all you have to work with, uh, so be it. Um, it's something, anyway. And here, I don't know if that comes up or not, but... This one is a little bit finer, and here you have 8.54. This one registers uh, 8.56, 8.58, 8.60. It'll go by two hundredths of a grain. Um, this pellet weighs 8.58, so I'll go and I put it in the 8.58 bin. You can get one of those bins. You can get them in hardware stores or Lowe's or some hard, you know, any kind of a shop, you can put them in separate bins, just so long as you know what they are. Let's see, this one is 8.32. 
make sure it's in the center. 8.50. So you, you can see that these, these are standard Air Arms 8.44s, or they're supposed to be. And as you see, it's close. Um, some of them weigh drastically more, and some of them weigh less. Some of them are acceptable, like a 4.5 ton. And this is basically all there is to it. You just have to be careful that there's no breezes. You have a nice solid workbench to work on. Here's, here's an ultra light one, 8.26. This is the reason why we, we weigh these. And I'm going to show you guys on the computer what happens using a chair gun program. I'm going to show you what happens when you shoot a pellet that's this light as compared to a pellet that's the proper weight. And we'll call the proper weight 8.44 because that's what these are nominally called. Um, but that's all there is to weighing them. Just weighing them and separating them into your uh, bins. And you can actually see this number change as I'm, my breath is actually affecting the um, uh, the weight of the of the scale and the pellet. So we're going to go to the computer and I'm going to show you what happens when you shoot on paper anyway a light pellet as compared to the proper weight pellet as compared to an extremely heavy pellet in that same bin. So we're going to turn this off and we're going to go to a computer. Okay, guys, I don't know how well you guys can see this. Um, it is a little dark. Uh, but bear through, bear through this, and I think I can explain what's going on. Um, first of all, right here where my icon is, that's my 30-yard zero. This is set up for my, my Marauder, um, and this is just to demonstrate what difference in weight of pellets will actually do to your point of impact. Um, at 30 yards, it won't make much of a difference. But when you're talking over here at 55, which is this point right here, I don't know if that'll, the camera will pick that up, but I am 3.2 inches lower than my zero at 30. Now, that's with a nominal 8.44 grain uh, pellet that is above here. It's probably off screen where you can't see that. But now, if we change the weight of the pellet, keeping the velocity the same, well, actually, it'll, it'll adjust, the, the, the program will adjust the velocity uh, by itself. So say we have an 8.10 grain pellet. And we click on that, and as you see, this point of impact moved. So now we're at three inches on the nose instead of almost three and a quarter. So it'll move a quarter of an inch between an 8.10 grain pellet and an 8.44 grain pellet. Um, and the velocity goes up to 811 feet per second due to the light weight of the pellet. It's given the same charge. Um, air pressure charge, but the pellet is lighter, so it's going to go a little faster. So now we're going to go up here, and we're going to change the weight of that pellet to an 8.74 grain pellet, and we'll click, and we'll change. And as you see, the curve moved once again. Now, instead of being at 8.3.2, um, inches lower than what my zero is here. Now we're almost at almost at three and a half inches. So you're you have about a five eighths almost well not quite. You'll have probably about a half inch of movement at fifty five yards just due to the different weights of the pellet. Um, that's what we're trying to avoid by having all the same weight where it's all consistent and it sits at the same spot. You're not going to notice too, it too much at 30 yards or closer, but at 55 yards, it's a, it's a very important detrimental thing. Now, taking that a little bit further down the road, if you have a lighter pellet, as we used before, say an 8.10 grain pellet, 
um, that we use in our first example, um, logic would say maybe the head size of that pellet might be a little bit smaller due to its lighter weight. And on the flip side of the coin, a heavier pellet that's 8.74 grains might have a larger head size. So they're going to have different drag um, forces within the barrel as that pellet is shot. So not only is the pellet heavier in that case, but being it has a bigger head size, it could cause more drag as well. Um, that's the point that I was trying to make with that at 55 yards with that particular grain pellet. So your zero generally won't move, but you'll notice it at 55. And as I click back to the lighter pellet, if you look at the uh, screen and you see, you can look at the curve, look at the curve at 55. See how that much, it, it moves. It moves a decent amount. And it'll move all through the range of probably between 40 and 55 yards at the greatest. So that's going to affect everything the most. Okay, guys, that's all it is to weighing pellets. Um, I hope the computer <laughs> demonstration uh, came out good, but I just did that to illustrate why it's very important that you use generally weights of pellets that are really close to each other, if not dead on. Um, it could change your trajectory and all of that. Next episode we're going to have, we're going to check the head size on that same batch of pellets and we're going to sort them as according to weight and head size as well. So if you guys didn't see the other videos, as I said before, click and like below, check out my other videos. And this has been Field Target Tech and I'm Tom Holland.